Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to talk about this intertwined ring and how do you puzzle them together, get into the shape you want without losing the true size of your ring size. Are you ready? Let's get started. The hardest part for this type of a model is not actually the intertwine, which is quite easy to deal with, but is to maintain everything within a circle so ring size we can get it as close as possible. So let me show you one of my uh, tricks to get this done in a more accurate way. Let's starting from scratch. I'm going to start at the front view and I'm going to build a ring size for whatever ring size you wanted to have. Uh, in this case, I want to use a 16 millimeter. All right. So the first things that we wanted to do is to tweaking this curve. But however, it is a degree two curve. So when you try to move the control point, you can see that it is giving you a kink and that's not what we want. So we will need to rebuild this guy first. Let's go ahead to use the rebuild and we want a degree into three and then you can have a lot more point if you want to. I want to stay with something uh, simple so it's easier control to smoother and I want to stay with 12 degrees three. Okay, so let's click OK. So now when you have this one, you can starting like tweaking, say this one need to go out a little bit and then at this point this one need to coming out a little bit for example all right and imagine that if you have another one that is completely opposite side we're going to have this one for example and then we just simply wanted to mirror to the other side just for the comparison and then we want to have one here and this one i would like to turn it into the green color so it's easier for you to see all right so something like this and we wanted to do is to have this two and I'm just going to use a, a line with horizontal center and that's to zero and that will be something like this. As you can see now they are like intertwined there but the bottom of the ring is not coming back uh, to the center. So the easy way to do that is coming into the right view and we are going to turn on the control point and I'm going to pick up all those control point and make them um, back to zero so they were snapping back together and then you can choose those to be coming in a little bit like this all right so it's not like too like separated there so now those are our curve all right um, let's give it a try if you are going to pipe it let's go ahead to pipe it let me show you what I have in mind if we are going to pipe it and let's say the radius is like 0.5 and we'll see something like this as you can see this is exactly intersect but the idea is to have one on top of the other right so we know one side need to be higher so i'm going to come back here before we pipe and i simply just wanted to have this point on my red one uh, it's going higher. The same thing on the opposite side is this point. It's going to be higher. So I'm going to pick up those two points and I'm going to raise them up. Something like this. All right. Notice that the front view, we still have a fairly good circle. Um, but we have this going up and down and let's go ahead to pipe again. The piping is just helping us to understand it uh, better. So you can see this one going up on top of this one coming back to the bottom and then we have something like this all right it looks all right there so we are going to have this one and this one did it now let's decide it for the uh, cross section i basically wanted to have three circles so first one going to snapping into the grid and i have something look like this and then i have this one that's going to be linear array and we're gonna go from here having three piece for example and roughly something like this i also want to creating the rectangle with the three points snapping one two and three for something like this and let's go ahead to delete anything that we don't need it which is here here um here and here all right, so then we have this profile there. Let's go ahead to join everybody and also giving a kind of like a fitted edges for something pretty big right here. 
right here. And we can have uh, something a little bit shadow, maybe 0.2 for those here and those here. All right, so this will be the cross section. I mean, you can have a cross section any kind if you want to. Let me draw another circle back. That's starting with the zero at the front view for diameter for 16. So then this is just for your reference for our original curve. All right, so I'm going to move in this guy back. So let's go ahead to use the move command, snapping into the midpoint of this profile and to the quadrant there. All right, so that is our profile. Now, if we having this one to mirror to the other side, and let's give it a try on the look. So that's using the sweep one rail, and we are going to pick up this red one. You have this one as a cross section, and then you want them to align with the same place which they are, and this is what we're going to get. Now I wanted to record a history just in case I wanted to change things and let's click OK. So then you have something like this, right? Now if you use exactly the same uh, profile but choose the green one and then you pick up this one, the curve, this one is the curve, make sure you align them and we get something like this. Notice that this one is actually not too bad, right? If you can coming back to see the render view, you're going to see it's actually intertwined. But I do not like this showing up. So we might need to do a little bit change there. Uh, let's go back to before we sweep there. So one more thing I wanted to adjust. We cannot move the things inside of the curve. So we want to move things outside of the curve. This one right here, and also the green one, you can see there's a one dot. Uh, by comparison, this, this dot is equally on the red one. I want it to go a little bit outside, so it's a bit puffier. So hopefully that will cover what we don't like to see over there. Let's give it another try. We're going to do sweep one rail. You got rail one, you got cross section one, cross section two. In fact, I want everybody align to the center. I think that's easier right there. And we want to have something like this, record a history there, click OK. All right, the second one I wanted to use this one, and we're going to use the same profile from here to here. And then we want to align to the inside of the ring shank, facing the same direction and record a history and then we'll get something like this. All right, I just want to turn them into the green color. All right, so you can see it's much better. It's not like cutting out. It doesn't see much cutting out right there. Now this is good to go. You can keep adjusting until this is completely uh, gone if that works for you. Uh, you may also wonder, can I make the top section a big, um, bigger? Yes, you can just put another cross section there. All right, so the rest of it is you are going to use uh, sweep one one more time, and we're going to pick up this one for the regular ring. We're going to use the same profile from here to here, and we're going to uh, make sure they're coming into inside of the ring shank uh, for all those arrows and facing the same direction, and it will go from here. Right. If you want a bottom of a ring shank to be tapered, just put another profile there and you can sweep. Then you will get some sort of an intertwined looking, something like this. Well, I make it a little bit heavy, but it's just try to show you how you make this one. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're interested in more of a jewelry cat tutorial, welcome to join my membership. A small fee per month is helping me as a small YouTuber, but able to keep creating free video for everyone. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.